Welcome to Exploring Harry Potter. And Hermione was struggling to her feet in the wreckage, and three red-headed men were grouped on the ground where the wall had blasted apart. Harry grabbed Hermione's hand as they staggered and stumbled over stone and wood. No, 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 someone was shouting. No, Fred, no. And Percy was shaking his brother, and Ron was kneeling beside them in Fred's eyes. They stared without seeing. The ghost of his last laugh still etched upon his face. J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter, and the Deathly Hallows. In a matter of seconds, George lost half of himself, half of his identity, looking down, seeing his own face laying there. Lifeless, time seemed to slow. They all cried out, Percy sobbing on Fred, who only reconciled hours before. Percy was fighting back at anyone who tried to pry him off of Fred. George, he just stood frozen, not believing what just happened. While the battle continued, Harry helped move Fred as the spiders from the Forbidden Forest started crawling inside the castle, eating the dead. They kept Fred's body safe from them. It was all they could do. After the battle was thankfully and finally won, the dead were brought into the Great Hall and carefully and lovingly laid out. There were so many. They all lost Fred. But George, he lost more. He felt half of his soul was gone. It was hard to breathe, hard to move. Now what? Part two. I imagine George stayed with his family until Fred was finally laid to rest. He eventually returned to their joke shop. Amidst his grief, it was still a massive success. He felt dead inside, but he smiled and laughed with customers. Any thoughts of closing the business was fleeting. This was their legacy, Fred's legacy, something they dreamed of all their lives. George couldn't extinguish the last thing they had accomplished and loved so much. Eventually, Ron would come and help him run it. Inside, he must have felt like he was a poor replacement. Did George feel like that too? If so, he'd never admit it. Time moves on, but it never really healed George. How could it? Everyone mourned over Fred. I bet the next holiday, everyone tries to cheer George up. They're his family and know when he's faking a smile. George thinks it can't get any worse, but he's wrong. It's only getting started. The first birthday is absolutely brutal. He and Fred were birthed together and ever since it was them against the world. The loss of his twin would continue to grow. Will the rest of his life be like this now? For him and his entire family? His face, which once brought pranks and laughter, now is a constant reminder of their loss. Every time George looked in a mirror, in every reflection he saw in a window, he saw Fred, his other half, He'd have to cover every mirror to escape it. Walking by windows looking straight at the ground, George often wondered if his family, if when they looked at him, who did they see? Him or Fred? Or is he both now? Have Fred and George ever really been independent from each other? Where did the line between them even blur? Where does it blur now that Fred's gone? George begins to isolate, unwilling to inflict further pain on his family and friends, or so he thought. If he was Fred's ghost to himself, he figured he was to everyone else, too. And if he couldn't handle the pain, then they probably couldn't either. George's mind twisted in his grief. How could this be reality? When George fell in love, there was no light-hearted heckling from Fred. And when he got engaged and married, Fred was supposed to be his best man. 
You'll think of him a lot that day. A day that should only be full of happiness. George isn't selfish in that. He knew the entire family and anyone who knew them would be thinking of Fred that day. His children? Maybe there's a silver lining here. Some scientists believe time is cyclical and twins do tend to run in families. I'd like to think George would have twins, bringing everything in full circle.